Jeffrey, this is a five-minute warm-up. Uh, well, George Orwell famously said, as Catherine reminded us, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they don't want to hear. Where did he say that? He said it, actually, in the unpublished introduction to Animal Farm. Why unpublished? Because his politically correct publisher, Victor Galatz, didn't want to publish Animal Farm uh, and insult our good and close ally, Joe Stalin. Well, a few years later, Orwell felt that Cyril Connolly and some other left-wing writers were telling people what he, Orwell, didn't want them to hear. So he ratted on them, made a list of them, and uh, sent it to MI5. Get after them with bug telephones, tap their telephones, intercept their letters, uh, do all the things that Mr. Smith had done to him uh, in a book called 1984. So George Orwell, Orwell certainly isn't in my pantheon of uh, liberal free speech heroes. He's just another Blair. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are at the Sunday Times Literary Festival, talking about whether there should be limits to free speech. As let us remember, while Michael Foote's ashes are still embers, are still glowing at gold as green creme, that Sunday Times front page. KGB, Foot was our man. The most disgusting defamatory character assassination front page of recent years. Michael was terribly upset. He spent his whole life as a journalist being sued by other people. He couldn't envisage that he would ever take libel action. But being called a traitor, uh, he had to do so, despite the fact that that wonderful private eye cover had the, the nation roaring with laughter at the Sunday Times with Michael and Dizzy the dog and uh, on Hampstead Heath looking for Soviet dead letterboxes. But uh, it was some consolation that we worked out a way to sue Rupert Murdoch personally. Uh, Foot versus Murdoch, one of the great cases that didn't come to court because it was immediately settled for a six-figure sum that Michael uh, spent, I think, on a film about the evils of Milosevic. So, there are limits, and uh, since I've managed to bite both the hands that uh, feed me or bring me to Oxford this morning, <laughs> let me say what I think they should be. There's no difficulty at all in having laws that uh, stop gross invasions of privacy, that stop character assassination, that require corrections of falsehoods before they Google their way around the world. Uh, and laws that promote investigative journalism and uphold free speech and the kind of things that electorates ought to know at the time they're voting. We don't have those laws in Britain. We don't have free speech. We have expensive speech. As today, you see uh, Michael Ashcroft, quite an important uh, subject, one would have thought, of the oncoming election. BBC have spent hundreds of thousands of pounds, our pounds, sending journalists round the Caribbean to uh, investigate. Uh, it won't be shown, because Mr Ashcroft has a very long purse and his lawyers are threatening injunctions and all sorts of things on the BBC. A classic example of how what you can publish, and I have some experience of this, I'm called in as a, 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 to advise publishers, and I see how books are de-gutted, because publishers just don't have the money, increasingly newspapers don't have the money to fight these cases. You tell them you've got a 60-40 chance of winning, you've got a 70-30 chance of winning, we can't take that risk. The last great case for free speech was fought in Britain, ironically, by the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it risked three million pounds by the time it got to the top court uh, and won the case. The suing in Britain is 140, well, the, the cost of defending libel actions in Britain is 140 times the cost of, um, uh, of doing it in Europe. So uh, it has become, I, I see the way, as I say, books on public affairs are de-gutted. Um, Michael Ashcroft the last time, uh, in fact I defended the Times when it was sued by Michael Ashcroft some ten years ago before 
uh, he got his peerage. And uh, I remember going the rounds with George Carman and uh, someone passed us a note saying, uh, <laughs> Mr. We were in court, uh, saying that uh, Mr. Ashcroft and Mr. Murdoch have met on a golf course and decided to settle it uh, with uh, no cost, no damages, uh, and no repetition. So uh, that is the way, in many cases, uh, that, that free speech had gone. Of course, the Americans get terribly upset about this, the, the, and, and they talk about the claimant friendliness of British law, and it is. Libel is the only branch of the law, of the civil law, in which uh, the burden of proving your case is not on the claimant who brings it, but on the defendant. Uh, this is unique. Uh, this is why libel actions, uh, libel awards in Britain are not enforced in the United States, because it's wrong in principle. This is why oligarchs, uh, Saudi billionaires, uh, all sorts of people flock to English courts, because not because of the money that they can win, because our damages are £200,000. Our legal costs are millions. Uh, and that is why, by bringing a libel action, they don't care about the money. They get disclosure. They get the journalist's notes. They get the journalist's sources. Michael Ashcroft got the source for the Sunday Times story because of, uh, through disclosure, he's in jail in America for two years. They can harass and embarrass their critics by using the mechanics of the libel law. The simple reform, which I suspect Parliament won't make, is to reverse the burden of proof, to put the burden of proof on the claimant who comes to court. Uh, it makes, it means that great wadges of stuff in American books are not repeated here. And sometimes when there's joint publishing, I had to, we had to take 21 passages out of Willie Shawcross's book on Sideshow, the, the argument that the bombing of Cambodia was, was a crime uh, because of British libel or because of the fear that Americans would come over here. Even the famous uh, uh, comment by Dan Moynihan about Henry Kissinger Henry doesn't lie because it's in his interests, he lies because it's in his nature. It was solemnly edited out of Time magazine in its European edition. So uh, there is this uh, serious, I think, threat uh, to freedom of speech, which we can see uh, at the moment in our own uh, election, at which the American papers see.